Hi guys, it's, it is a chilly, soon to be rainy night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this chilly mid-June night in the middle of some mythical global heat wave that the denizens of the Finger Lakes of New York are completely mystified by. But anyway, it is Tuesday, June 23rd, June 13th. 18th, 2023. I keep saying it is June 23rd. It is June 13th, 2023, and uh, <laughs> I just spent 25 minutes doing my chronicle of the collapse about uh, this excellent new blog post by my uh, co-conspirator in the Doomosphere, shall we say, my good buddy Elliot Jacobson, uh, who is now the, Elliot Jacobson is, is, is now famous, uh, apparently. He is quickly making a name for himself. Uh, there's some rumor that maybe the New York Times has even picked up some of this uh, from his new excellent blog post from Watching the World Go By, BYE, WTF is Happening, an overview. So I spent 25 minutes reading this, showing you some of these excellent uh, graphics that uh, Elliot has produced that's making him a new star uh, in the mainstream media. Uh, his excellent graphics, you know, showing, well, uh, <laughs> showing how WTF we are, I guess. So anyway, I was five minutes from finishing that excellent essay. I don't know if I'm go going to post the uh, the long part. I'm letting Elliot uh, decide whether he wants me to run the full part. But anyway, I was just getting into the best part, what people really want to hear anyway, and that is after crunching all of these numbers, and Elliot Jacobson this man has done his homework uh, while I have been washing sheets and, uh, and doing whatever I do with my life. Elliot Jacobson has been chronicling the collapse of the planet and in this long involved piece that's making him so famous now. So what are his conclusions in the overview of WTF. These are his final conclusions. If you if you read, I will put the link to the entire piece. I highly advise uh, anybody trying to understand WTF is going on on this planet to read the entire thing. But I'm going to cut to the chase, get to the bottom and find out what does Elliot Jacobson uh, see in the tea leaves after crunching the numbers for the summer of 2023. Take it away. So everything that he's mentioning in this first paragraph, uh, he elaborates on. And the some of this won't make sense to you, but he elaborates on all of these subjects uh, in the body of the rant. So these are the, the bottom line. It is my opinion that the combination of years of ocean heating generated by the earth energy imbalance, heating in Antarctica due to open ocean, Shifts in winds and surface heating 
due to El Nino, you know, which is ramping up. <clears throat> Lack of Saharan dust, which he talks about in the body of his essay. And the global dimming from mandated reductions in sulfur content in global shipping fuels, which he also uh, talks about, have together triggered. Take all of those together, all of those ingredients in the collapse do, have together triggered unprecedented ocean surface warming. I don't have the expertise to put these in any particular causal order, but that doesn't really matter. The consequences are clear. As we enter Northern Hemisphere summer, despite what's uh, going on in the Finger Lakes of New York, that outlier, as we enter Northern Hemisphere summer, large regions of the planet will experience all-time record heat waves, fires, storms, and flooding. These events will set records in intensity, duration, and frequency. The planet's overall temperature will spike to new highs for the modern era with one and a half C in sight for 2024. Antarctic polar sea ice, I don't know, he doesn't talk about the Arctic uh, polar sea ice, but Antarctic polar sea ice will continue its retreat from normal, exposing more open ocean to incoming solar radiation and heating, especially as the sun returns later this year. Crops will fail. Yeah, like my tomatoes are failing because they're so cold uh, is the reason uh, my tomatoes are failing. They're freezing to death. And anyway, crops will fail. Infrastructure will break beyond repair. Climate migration will spike. Meanwhile, carbon dioxide from anthropogenic source, sources continue to spew at a near record rate, while the Paris limit of one and a half C requires these emissions to be reduced about 7% per year for the next decade. And this is all happening in the midst of the current political and social chaos. These next two years are a preamble to what it will mean for the world to pass the Paris one and a half C barrier. The end, the end of global industrial civilization is where we are headed right now, not at some future dystopian moment. I wish I had a ho. I wish I had a ho. I wish I had a ho. A a ho. A a a a ho. A a hope. Hopeful word to end with. But, I don't. There you go. Uh, and this is the reason uh, why uh, Elliot uh, Jacobson is my brother in arms in the Doomosphere. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> he agrees with me on the H word uh, because there is no H word. Uh, we've got to start dealing with this as a planet 
and uh, as a planet and as individuals. Uh, it's all over, folks. And uh, thank you, Elliot Jacobson. And uh, I'm, as I say, I'm letting Elliot decide whether uh, I'm going to run the the collapsed version of this full video, uh, but I will put the link on here so you can read it yourself and see all his famous uh, graphs and stuff. And uh, just to note, I I just finished listening to uh, Sandy Shellis's interview on uh, environmental coffeehouse. She just uh, interviewed. Uh, oceanographer, I think Jim Massa. Jim, are you an oceanographer or a climatologist? But anyway, uh, after you read Elliot's uh, excellent blog post or listen to or listen to it, as the case may be, be sure you go over to Environmental Coffee House and listen to uh, Sandy's conversation with Jim Massa. A lot of what Elliot's talking about here um, was discussed in that interview. So Jim uh, basically echoing uh, Elliot and pretty much coming up with the same conclusions. I, I heard no hopium at the end of that uh, interview either. So go check that out. And meanwhile... Uh, I need to get the heater cranked back up because uh, we're freezing here in the Finger Lakes, uh, heading to 45 degrees Fahrenheit, the high of 62 for June 14th tomorrow. We're running about 20 degrees below, 20 degrees Fahrenheit below normal for this time of year in the Finger Lakes. So if you are dying in a heat wave, come see us at Bugs in a Jar Farm and you will take care of that. Isn't that true, little dog? Say bye, guys. Bye, guys. All right. We got some heat going. Get that heater cranked up.